Okay, now just before I go on <clears throat> to the three things that make us distinctively human, I just want to reiterate a little bit or maybe just express a little bit more clearly the the this phenomena or this uh, this revivification of the past in, in a modified form. So for example, we've all had experiences of anger in our past. We've and this anger what happens to it is it becomes revivified, which means it comes to life again. And it comes to life again in a modified form in the sense that you might be angry with a different person than you were in the past, and you might say slightly different things, but the feeling is the same. You're experiencing yourself as if you are an angry person. You're experiencing yourself as an angry person. You're having certain types of thoughts. You've got certain types of emotions. You've got certain physical postures that are coming uh, into the fore. So when, when, and so this whole sense of identity, this whole package of thinking, feeling, physiological reactions like tightness or whatever comes into play. So it's resuscitated now, or revivified as I prefer to say. And this is what, and this is happening to us all the time. What happens is something happens and bang, out it comes. Now, a very interesting thing Swamini Atma Prakasananda said to me when I first started learning this stuff is he said that people and events never ever hurt you. Uh, people and events never hurt you. They're only instrumental in revealing a hurt or a pain that already exists. And she said that this an understanding of this fact is the beginning of emotional maturity. Now, in Vedanta, uh, it's a, considered a very important thing to prepare the mind for the knowledge, uh, the knowledge of who and what we are in terms of what we really are, uh, the knowledge of our nature. Uh, and the thing is that in life, we often feel that other people do cause us to get upset. We really genuinely believe when you have an argument with your spouse, you just know it's their fault. They have upset you. You just know this. And when you're under the sway of that type of thing, we're under the sway of blame. We continually blame. You are getting me upset. When in actual fact, this upset, this anger or frustration or hurt, what happens is it surfaces. It just it, it is revivified, and you once again are experiencing yourself in a certain way. Now, so, and as as you can see, this is like a replay. It's it's completely determined. It's and it's determined by past events, but the experiences you're experiencing yourself in the present as a certain type of person. But this experience of yourself in the present as a certain type of person is caused by a revivification of past events. As Swami Dayananda and Swami Atma, Atma, Atma Prakasananda often said, triggers. Now, so when we're like this, we're being completely determined. There's no choice here. We're just simply living out or we're dramatizing a certain sense of identity that has been formed in the past. Now, there's no freedom in that. Now, when we look at what is it in us that makes us a human being? What is it that makes us distinct from animals? Animals are, are programmed biologically. We are programmed biologically, but we're also programmed psychologically. It's the same kind of determinism. There's no freedom in that. So we can't help, because our psychological background is a certain content, we can't help but keep on repeating ourselves again and again and again. We're going through the same kind of repeating scenarios with people and others, the same types of upsets, the same types of frustrations, the same type of resentments, the same type of fears, etc. Now, the interesting thing that, Swamini Atma Prakasananda said in her talk just recently was the first thing that distinguishes us from animals is the fact that we're aware that we exist and we're aware that the world is 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 present, that it exists. 
Now, this is a very important thing because what happens is it doesn't matter how much psychological uh, difficulties you've had in the past, no matter how, it doesn't matter how bad the situation has been, you have a capacity to pause and, and begin to examine, begin to become aware of what is happening. Now this, when you become aware and you start to examine what is happening, this is not a product of your past training. This is not programming. This is the exercising of an innate capacity a capacity that makes us different from programmed animals. So this is the first thing. So this capacity to be aware is the first thing. The second thing that we have that differentiates us from animals and is intact, we have it. It doesn't matter what has happened in the past. We have the ability of what they call discrimination. A discrimination in Vedanta means to be able to distinguish between two different things what's right and what's wrong, what's helpful and what's unhelpful, what's, what's, uh, what's in this case, what's re reactive and what's responsive. This faculty of discrimination, what's good for us, what's bad for us. This faculty of discrimination, when we co it comes into play, we, when we can actually, no matter what situation we're in, we can actually see this would be good for me to do. We may not feel like doing it, the programming the force of habit of the, of, the, of the programming or the force of habit of being in a certain way may be strongly against this, but the fact of the matter is we can come and we can discern. We can actually, but by the faculty of discernment, we can understand and arrive at what would be the best thing to do, what, what, what is true about this situation as opposed to what's false. And lastly, we have this ability we have choice over action. So once we've discerned what would be the best thing to do, we have the capacity to make our actions conform to our understanding. And this is so important because without exercising choice, without exercising choice and using our will to make sure that our actions line up with what we know to be right and good is a very fundamental faculty. Now, it's important to understand that because these three things are not produced by the past, but they are, they are faculties that are inherent in our being, in a sense, in our human existence, our human individual existence. What's important about this is that it, this is the basis of a free life. This is the basis of what we call responsiveness. You see, responsiveness is the basis of it, or what it is, is that we're looking at a situation, something happens, we can see clearly what would be the best thing to do in that situation, and then we do it. But when we react, we can't be responsive. So we have this basic discrimination between, we have this basic discrimination between a reactive life, where we just simply live out, live out the past in the form of, of, of a certain identity that we dramatize or identities, happy one, sad one, doesn't really matter, it's all just determined. Or we can begin to live a life where we become responsive. In other words, we respond. We, have, we exercise our ability to respond, our responsibility. And for the spiritual life, without responsibility, without without exercising our capacities as a human being, all we're going to do is we're just simply going to be living out again and repeating the past. There will be nothing new is possible. So the, so the exercising of our ability to see, to discriminate, and to exercise our choice over action is fundamental to preparing our minds for the knowledge that Vedanta presents to us.